Heather Marzigliano from Grace on Broadway. I actually wore my own shirt today and I am here. We're going to continue on talking about how to use photography and photographs with Dixie Bell products. Okay, so last week we did a fox and I didn't have a ton of time to let him dry. So this is the fox that we actually worked on and I let him dry all week and I've been slowly taking his paper off this morning. So what we did last week is we took his main photograph. This was the fox's original photograph and I photocopied it with a laser printer, not a photo jet. We then used Dixie Bell satin and we put the Dixie Bell satin down and then we took our photocopy and we put our photocopy like this on the clear coat satin and I let it sit the entire week because last week we hurried up because we were live and it didn't like it worked but we kind of scratched his face so I wanted to show you guys the image if you let it dry look at how cool that is so this is his picture and this is what he looks like once we were able to let him dry appropriately how cool is that okay so I purposely distressed around his edges what I did was I used uh, my surf prep rad pad it's foam on the back and abrasive on the front and I just went around these edges and kind of started doing this right before we came on because I want to show you guys a different way to use these photos like not only these photos but any photos and I just went around to kind of I want him to become kind of part of this wood and now if we had painted the background or did anything like that um, obviously that color would be peeking out so we can continue around this actually has some egg on it and I'm going to go to a stronger one. So we can continue kind of going around and cleaning up these edges to make the photograph part go away. So not on wet paint. What we did last week, you can go back and see last week's the full, is you put the photograph has to be photocopied onto a, a regular paper with a laser jet copy machine and then you paint your clear coat satin and you put it image side down and let it dry for a long time this dried for a week and then you take your water and you very gently very gently get the paper pulp off okay because when you start to do it it's going to be paper side down so water 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 to get your paper off okay and you're just going to keep doing it gentle 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 until all your papers removed and if it's very wet you might have to let it dry for a couple hours and even come back this is not a process when you don't have patience or you don't have time and you need to rush something and um, you definitely want to be able to take your time and be patient with the process but the results can be very very cool okay look at that once we went around and got all his hard edges out now we can put some brown wax around him and he'll look like he was always part of this wood so that's very neat okay so this is what happens when you have patience <laughs> so um very cool I, I love this part so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna play with the owl so here's the photograph of the owl isn't he cute look at him I love his face okay oh you can see my light 
<laughs> so what I did is I have a laser printer at home. So again, I made a photocopy with my high quality laser printer. Inkjet will bleed. Here's our picture. Okay, so we got all that stuff. If you don't have a laser printer at home, you can go to Staples and they can print it for you. So what I wanna do is I wanna do some decoupaging and going from photograph to decoupage. Um, and how to create like a cute little sign with a photograph. Again, I use all these wood blanks from Sinopoly for my tutorials and my videos and my practice. This stuff can easily be translated from a board to a piece of furniture, okay? So, like this could be a door, right? So I think we're all creatives. We can all understand that just because we're doing it on a small scale doesn't mean it can't, it can't become bigger, right? So the first thing I wanna do is I have my round and I want to line it up where my design is mostly in frame, okay? And then I'm gonna kinda just my edges in. I don't think I wanna keep like the total ring, but we'll adjust that part later. All right, so now I see my circle. So I'm gonna place this circle back on that circle. And I'm gonna use this handy dandy little knife to cut my design out. much ado we have our circle <laughs> okay and here's our wood blank so because sometimes things rip sometimes they bubble I think at some point I'm gonna I don't think I want to keep him completely covering the wood blank so I was looking at all of these colors in his background see all those those colors and the ones that jumped out to me that I really liked to kind of go with it was pine cone and kudzu. So what we're gonna do quickly at first is I'm just gonna put a background coat with kind of both of these colors in no particular order, just so that should we see some of the background, especially as we go ahead and sand it back in a little while. I would like to be able to see some of these colors instead of like a natural wood. Okay, so there is my quick first coat of pine cone. Let's dry it super duper quick. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with my kudzu and just kind of go over it. I do need some water. Apparently I did not close my lid right last time. So if your paint is ever thicker than it needs to be because you shut your paint in a rush like I do sometimes, all you need to do is add a bit of water. There is no need to panic or think that your paint is awful. You're just gonna add some water. Guns are super duper hot, so please make sure you take care when you're using it. You guys, too, a bunch of people have asked me how do you layer paint. We just did it literally right here. So, if you ever want to layer your paint instead of blending your paint, it's just a matter of laying literally different layer upon layer until you get the look you want with all different colors. One color, well, two colors, five colors, 
You just kind of keep going and layering it, okay? So we just did some layers. Gonna get this good and dry. Now we all know in real life things don't dry this quick. And we're not gonna use heat guns for all our big projects, right? This is Dixie Belle Clear Coat Satin. What we're gonna do is we're going to put a nice even, not too thin, not too thick. I'm gonna try to show you what just right looks like. See how it's shiny over the whole thing? So if you put too much it's gonna saturate your paint, your your paper. If you put too little, it's not going to adhere. So, I put our design down, and we're gonna work from the center out, and we wanna smooth it. So, you can use your fingertips to work your paper straight across and even. <laughs> this paper is squeaky. <laughs> Isn't that funny? So now our owls adhered. So cute. He's so cute. I think it's adorable. Yeah. But we don't want to end there. I mean, he looks like almost too perfect. That's no fun. <gasps> I know. We're going to sand around all the edges, okay? Because we want him to look like he's been there this whole time. What do you think, Travis? Mm -hmm. Now, a fast way to do this is if you have like an electric sander to put a real soft paper on and go super gentle. I really get these edges off. But I want to work around these edges. And make him old. I know that it's white there. I have a plan for that. So this is a really low grit. And um, this is just regular old copy paper. Okay. I want my edges super rough. We probably could have cut him a little bit smaller, but it's okay. And then I want to start kind of bringing my distressing of the paper softer as we're getting to him because I want him to stand out. So now, here's how cute he is. And see how we kind of took it from the wood and blended it right to where he is. So if you use an ink, inkjet, the inkjet is going to bleed. So now what I want to do to kind of marry the wood and the white of the paper and the colors that are coming up here is I'm just going to continue to sand a little bit around these edges. I think I want just a little bit more. Um, in hindsight, I really am kind of digging how this is down here. So maybe I would have cut it like a quarter inch of the edge still there. I'm just gonna use the water to help break apart some of that paper along the edge because I really want to bring it back to those pretty colors we painted in the beginning. So the reason I wanted to play with all of this is because right next to where I keep all the paints and, and DIY supplies in my shop, is this fabulous artist photographer and her husband and they make these amazing photographs of all of these animals that are close to their home and they go on hikes and like these images are just incredible so i wanted to show you guys that if something inspires you you can still use it in a bunch of different ways with your Dixie Belt products 
to create your own version of whatever it was that inspired you. Perfect. Now I have the edges that I want. So I hope you guys are seeing what I did is I took my mister bottle and I sprayed the edges of my paper and I'm going with my sandpaper back around those edges and I'm kind of working with the grain to pull off these edges and get underneath to the colors that we painted in the beginning. So here's our guy. Look at how cool. Isn't that fun? Look at those edges. Okay, so you see how we were able to go from perfect photograph, perfect photograph, to very neat on wood, okay? So now, to take it one step further, if we want to like really blend in those edges, we want to make it, you know, even more rustic, blah, blah, blah. What we're going to do, I'm just kind of like getting off any final little bits of like paper schmutz, is you're going to let this dry all the way overnight and then you're going to use your satin clear coat if you're done. If this is how you want it to look and you're completely done. Some of these little paper bits are driving me crazy because they're wet and I can't. This is where patience comes in. Stop touching things, Heather. Just stop touching it. The other thing you can do at this point is take brown wax and a small bit of a t-shirt rag. Well, you don't need a lot. And then, oh, where you can use the laser printer. I'm, I promise you that um, Staples or any like Office Max, your local library, anywhere that has a big office printer, it's laser jet. Yeah, that is too small. I don't know what I'm thinking. That was a ridiculous piece. I mean, you need it to be a little bit bigger than than that one. That was a little ridiculous. You can take the teeniest bit of wax and use that kind of around these edges and it'll help make your edges just look that much more authentically old. Because if we want him to look old, like he's been here forever, we don't necessarily want it to be bright white. Because old things are not necessarily always super bright and super shiny. Plus, it adds a whole other dimension and layer to your project and the colors in it. So I'm just going to show you what this looks like with wax. I think wax adds like this really pretty final touch. And again, I know we're doing this on a board. Now, first of all, these could be very cool smalls to sell. If you're, if you have a booth, if you do, um, if you do shows, these would be amazing presents for the holidays or birthdays if you got photographs of people or their children. But this could also be used on larger pieces of furniture. So I'm even adding a little bit of brown wax to the picture itself. I just want to see a little bit more brown than white. All right, so I am going to Come back over by you guys and show you this is our guy. Isn't he great? So the brown wax 
these look super close. See how it really just added that extra layer? So those are all the layers of goodness. I'm Heather, this is our project. <laughs> um, also, let me get our box guy back. If you watched, you can go back in the replays and, and watch last week's video. Let me just clean them up a bit. Last week we did this fox this way uh, with the um, actual transferring of the image. And this week we used decoupage and added our owl. So please make sure that you let everything inspire you, try new things, um, and know that no matter what, Dixie Bell has everything you need to do all this fun stuff. Um, I, again, I'm Heather Marzignano. My store and page is Grace on Broadway. It's tagged above. I would love, love, love for you guys to, to like me and follow me and do all the fun things and see all the stuff we're working on. And um, thank you for spending your Tuesday morning with me. I will see you guys later. Bye.